In today's installment of Unpacked. I wanted to get to know her and mm. not her disability, of course. And then I remember when I met him, um, he tried to push me. So I was like, no, no she okay. wasn't having it. <laughs> She's like, I can I'm do like, it myself. I was like, no, I want to see you because if you're behind me, now I can't see. <laughs> she touched my heart. Uh, she's full of kindness, compassion, you know, uh, caring. Many people have so many questions for interabled couples. We have one that is here with us today to share their story. Let's unpack. 37 year old Tembi Silem Sivi and German born Tsidiso Mashinini are an interabled couple with a love story that proves that love is still possible in the digital age. Having met on a dating app, the Johannesburg based pair have become inseparable. This is their unique love story. Let's unpack. Tembisile and Sidiso, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for yeah. having us. Thank you for having me. I'm going to start with you, Tembisile, being the one who uh, is not able bodied in the couple. And I'd like to find out what, what was dating like for you because you've spent your adult life in either crutches or a wheelchair. And what was that experience like just having, you know, dating and relationships? It has been challenging because you get men who think that you just want a person who feels sorry for you, right, for mm. dating you. So some of them will take advantage in terms of maybe asking, are you working? And if you say yes, they'll stay, you know, in a relationship because you're working, they'll gain something out of uh, dating you. Yes. And at the end, you'll find out that actually this person is not in a relationship with me because they love me, but they want to use me. Wow. Yes, so do those you, are the challenges. Do you think sometimes um, men or potential uh, uh, suitors actually look at you as somebody they can take advantage of because you're a bit more vulnerable in society? Definitely, yes. So you really, I, I would meet guys who would be like, okay, I'm in a relationship with someone else, but I can just be in, in a relationship with you, you know, because that's the reason why I was saying that. Some of them, they, you know, stay in a relationship with you because they're thinking that you are a charity case, basically. Mm -hmm. So they don't come into your life because they want to have a serious relationship with you or build something with yeah. you. But take uh, the advantage because of you are a person with a disability. Maybe they don't want to take you seriously, basically. Yes. Yes. What about the people who, like, are you afraid of men who fetishize you? I am definitely afraid mm. of men who, yes. Have, have they approached you and what are the things that they would say that would make you realize, uh, -uh this is just a weird fetish? They would mostly be interested on... And like on in my life, they'll be asking questions like, "Are you working?" Um, they won't. Be, what it, they wouldn't want to like ask you questions about you personally. You mm. know, getting to know you as a person, mm. but not as a person with a disability who they can take advantage mm. of. Mm. Yes. Mm. And what about on your side? I mean, you would have some people who might be thinking, "Why would you go out of your way?" knowing relationships are as hard as they are, to date someone where there's already an existing challenge you know about up front? Well, uh, in a sense, the relationships are challenging mm. for themselves. But um, having met uh, Timmy, I don't see it as a challenge. I see it as, you know, an adventure, mm. as a new experience. And it's it's not got to do anything with a, a like a disability mm. or being dis disadvantaged in some way, but more like sharing sharing something together. Mm -hmm. So maybe you can share with me. I'm gonna ask both of you because every time you ask couples, how did you guys meet? The story is hardly ever the same. So how did you guys meet? <laughs> well, this isn't something new, but um, we met on Tinder. And uh, yeah, a week from now, yes. that's gonna be our first year together. Yes. So yeah, it was a, you know, just one of those experiences. We kind of connected. Um, 
and we got to talking and after a few dates or so then um kind of i just knew yeah this is it yeah do you share the same story um yes a bit <laughs> <laughs> some of it. so so i mean i'm curious then on your online dating profile are you upfront about your physical uh, abilities or restrictions and do you put those on your profile i normally don't put those on my profile because mm. i want the person to get to know me first mm. not uh, my disability yeah. so it would be like this uh, this is the person that i am and then that's when i say okay i'm a person i'm a woman with a disability so that maybe when it comes to the time when we have to meet the person is like wow you didn't actually tell me that yes. you are a person with a disability Yes. So at least they they get to make up their mind if they want to meet me or not, or they just not up for the challenge. <laughs> yes, yes. What what were some of the re- reactions to to other men that you'd be talking to, especially if you're vibing and getting along, where then you say, oh, by the way, this is my situation. They'll be like, what happened? Now they're more interested in a disability. Yeah. That they don't focus on me personally. Yes. They're like, what happened to you? How do you do this? How do you do that? And yeah, that's we'll be just talking about the disability from there on. After I've mentioned that yeah. I'm a person with a disability, then it's like, okay, no, I didn't sign up for being asked about my disability. I just wanted yes. somebody that I can build, you know, life with. Yeah, what what was different about him that you were okay with it because on the one hand a person might be thinking oh i thought asking about your disability is showing i'm interested in something that forms a part of your life whereas maybe i shouldn't be asking because the focus should be on you as a person so what did he do that was different so with him when i told him that i'm a person with a disability so he was he was okay with it mm. of course he He didn't actually ask more question about the disabilities like okay because I've already mentioned that I'm a woman yeah. with a disability I'm using crutches and when I'm in the morning I probably use um, a wheelchair when mm. I'm shopping right mm. so I think that's enough for a person to get to know me mm. not that now you continue asking and asking only about the disability so he was okay with it and I was like okay maybe I can also ask him more question about himself mm. and then get to know each other more Were you ever not okay with um your disability when it comes to dating? Yes, because I would go on the dating app when I started going on the Tinder dating app, I didn't want to explain myself every time to a mm. person when it comes to disability. It was really tiring. I was like, mm. couldn't just like be like this is Tim B C L and then move on from there on, but every time I have to like mentioned the disability it became too strenuous and I was yes. like do I have to go through that mm. really so sometimes I'd be like no, no I, I don't have energy for this maybe staying single is mm. would be better for me I don't have to explain myself to anybody no and I, and I, I I'm sure it's so annoying because you have to deal with it every single time but the other person is like it's the first time for them so they're going to be asking you the I same know, questions yes, over and over, and over, and over again. Again. I got you I got you so on your side what was your response or reaction when she told you well I'm uh, knowing that I haven't like been in a relationship with someone um who has a disability or a disadvantage in that way um it's didn't come so much as a surprise but um i just you know wanted to see how how it uh, kind of went because mm. i wanted to get to know her and mm. not her disability of course mm. because you know every every person has a story and um has something to share yeah mm. i mean i think your perspective is the ideal world and that's for all communities uh, or individuals from various communities and especially marginalized communities that the ideal world is a person just wants to get to know you irrelevant of x y and z that is not considered in inverted mm. commas normal or the average yeah. so tell me then um what the relationship was like when you guys start dating and maybe you know for those that are watching that are like actually there's somebody I'm talking to and I'm not sure what's appropriate or inappropriate to ask because if you need to set up a first date you know where does the date happen 
is the do you have to have a caregiver with like there's so many questions that come about so maybe share with us first what your guys' first date in person experience was like and then you can chat to us about what what maybe people shouldn't ask if they're looking to have a relationship with someone who has similar restrictions to your own for me personally um asking anything that you want to ask just to get to know the person i think you shouldn't hold back mm. because you really want to get to know the person are they what they are saying they are yes. so i think you shouldn't be actually um you know hold back in asking questions mm. and obviously there'll be those questions that you you shouldn't ask um like what 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 is a highly inappropriate question okay so if if it's the first time now getting to know this person you wouldn't ask like how many brothers and where do you stay because obviously you're still trying to get to, to know the person mm. so now you can't give away your addresses and you know immediately mm. maybe get to know the person first mm. maybe give it some few two months at mm. least and then maybe after meeting that's when you can go in depth and okay where do you stay mm. brothers and sisters and so forth maybe if they want if they are open into sharing that information with you mm. yes what was your guys's and maybe you can tell me what was your first date like how did you set it all up uh actually quite nerve-wracking i think we uh, postponed it, like I think two weeks or something Why? getting cold feet and you know yeah. nerves are like tense but um Yeah, we met at the Cresta Mall, um, just arranged something so uh, we could meet, uh, have a spend day together. And um, first we didn't see each other because, you know, I didn't notice her passing me by, obviously with the wheelchair. Yes. I was expecting her with uh, maybe like with the crutches yes. or something. So was that, was that something you actually spoke about? No, we didn't. Like, especially because no. it's sort of a blind date, no. even though you have pictures of each other, yeah. it's kind of a blind date. So did you, did you, you didn't say to him, I'm in a wheelchair, so I'm the one. Sometimes a person's like, I'm the one with the red rose in my shirt, yeah. or I'm wearing this. <laughs> That's how you find each other. So if you didn't tell him, you're now looking for somebody in crutches, and you're not seeing somebody in crutches, should that have been discussed? Oh, Probably, yes. But, uh, you know, I called her. She said, I just passed exclusive books. So I'm like, okay, I'm here at exclusive books. So yes. I just turned around and then we saw each other yes. just there right away. Yes, yes. So, yeah. And I guess the conversation might be a bit different if, um, you know, your restrictions were a bit more as in like somebody else having to push you. Were you completely independent on the date or somebody had to be assisting you? I was completely independent. I remember when I met him, um, he tried to push me. So I was like, no, no she I'm wasn't okay. having it. <laughs> so like, I, I was like, no, myself. I want to see you because if you're behind me, now I can't see you. Was that an awkward moment for you? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> because I'm trying to deal with meeting him for the first yes. time and now I have to be like, no, I want to see you, don't push But me. But I, I would have probably been... Like in his position yeah, where actually, like you just yeah, go in. But I think that whip. that's maybe yeah. one thing is that it wouldn't be better if somebody says, can I push you or do you need my assistance? Oh, yes, yes. So, yes, it was polite of him to ask. So that's the reason why I was like, no, I want to see you. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I never even thought about that because like you're actually on a date and the person is, is behind, behind you. Behind you, yes. Okay, okay. And I think it helps that you are quite independent in terms of um, being able to get around wherever it was that you're meeting. So it's not like there's somebody pushing you and taking you and then he must take over kind of a thing. So it removes that dynamic from the relationship. Yeah. What, were, what were some of the other restrictions that maybe you had to deal with that you've never experienced at the same time uh, um, um, at all, let me say, but you deal with all the time? For example, if you go into a restaurant, they don't have to give you a chair because you were already in one. Mm -hmm. What are the things that you had to deal with that you've never had to deal with? I think it's, it's just more like, you know, you could, the, the tables that you pick kind of thing is if they're open tables, you can just, uh, we won't have to like pick a seat. You just yeah. be like on the outside or yes. if, if it's like a, 
a roundabouted uh, seating arrangement. Yes. It's, it's not that difficult to yes. kind of, yeah, find your place. <laughs> yes, <laughs> like, yes, yes. So obviously you guys are together now for like a year, so things went really well and you've met each other's families. Does your family have the same concerns um, with regards to dating as the ones you've mentioned, like, is this person here to take advantage of our child? Like, do they have those same type of concerns? Yes, they have. Because I remember my mom was asking him, are you working? Are you?" And then she was asking me, do you love him? Mm. I was like, yes, I do love him. It mm. was a bit awkward because I was like, yes, I do All love of this him. in front of him? Yes, in yeah. front of him. <laughs> She was okay. Those yeah. What are the What are the other concerns? With my mom, it was just that are you working? Because she knew that um, most of the time I'd meet guys who are not working or who who ask me that question if yeah. I am working. Yeah. You know, uh, just for them to take advantage of that. So I think that's the reason why she was asking, is he working yes. and so forth? Yeah. Just to see if he's a genuine person. Yes. Yes. Look, I mean, I I, th I think it's a valid fil filtration to have of the are you working, but we all know it does not guarantee genuine people, I like know. even <laughs> disingenuous people are working, you know. But I, I get where that comes from because of the... The, the history of people trying to take advantage of you thinking, oh, no, she's working, she's got money, so I can be comfortable here. What are, what are the uh, concerns or maybe reservations that may have been raised when she met your family? Well, I think there were many concerns, actually, if any. Mm. Um, they actually welcomed her, um, didn't ask me any questions and all. Yes. They just, you know, found, asked if I was happy uh, to be with her and but no interrogations there was like you know just um it's like everyone was just open to yeah 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 um just in terms of what are some of the day-to-day -day things that maybe your able-bodied couples don't think about that you guys have to navigate because um I wouldn't have to you know, as an able-bodied person, have to think twice about where are we going for a date or where are we going for an outing? Because the, if, if the person I'm with is able-bodied, we don't have to think about those things. But there'll be things you have to think about, like, you know, wheelchair access and that kind of thing. So what are the things that you need to think about when you plan dates and you want to go out and have a good time? It'll be activities. I mean, I can't go um, really... Uh, like hiking in hectic mm. places where mm. I have to walk on rocks because then I'll be falling all the way to wherever we're yes, going. Yes, yes. But so far we went to places where at least if there's some things that I cannot do, there's, you know, there's some things that I can do at the same yes. time so we can choose from the activities. Like yes. we went to Gold Reef City. Mm. So with that I was like, okay, I can't go climbing on that yeah. because of one, two, three. But they were actually helpful as well to advise that, okay, you can go on this ride mm. or you can't because of this or we can help you when you get there. Just yes. give us a call and then we can come and help you maybe if you are struggling getting yes. there. So it's basically just finding out if am I going to be able to be climbing, if maybe yes. there's a whole lot of climbing yes. and then take it from there. Yes, yes. And on your side, are there things that you've really wanted to do that you were not able to do? Well, we're still exploring that, let me tell yes. you. Yes. But um, there's obviously there's some things, maybe like, you know, outdoor exploring, you know, like nature, hiking, things like that. Maybe a bit difficult mm. does mean it's impossible, but yes. yeah, it's you know it's open to discussion. Yes, yeah. yes. Now you guys are not living together uh, at the moment. Who do you live with, and who actually assists you? Currently, I stay alone. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. So I do everything my, by myself. Mm. If there's anything, if it comes over, then I ask him to assist me yes, with that. Yes. yes. When when it came to you getting a place to live. What are some of the things that you had to look out for um, to make sure that you're comfortable to be there and be independent without constantly needing to ask for help? I had to check on if maybe 
like now I'm staying in, in a complex. Mm. Obviously, there are, um, you know, the units. Some of yeah. the units are a bit higher. And yes. What if now the elevator is broken? I have to mm. walk all the way, maybe to the ninth floor. So I had to choose a unit, which is at least um, open the gate and yes. get into the unit. Yes. Mm. So mm. those are the things that I had to consider. Though, you know, so some of the things in that unit are still a bit of a um, challenge. Mm. You always find ways to work on it. Mm. Um, like maybe going to hang my clothes mm. onto the line, the staircases to take the, mm. and the, but then there are other alternatives where you can get, like, where I can get uh, something where I can hang the clothes outside yes. in my balcony yes. Yes. for them to dry out instead of, you know, going to the other side yes. to hang the clothes on the line. When do you use the wheelchair versus choosing to use crutches? I use the wheelchair when I go to the mall. Mm. So I'll get to the mall. They normally have the, um, um, the wheelchairs yes. there. So when I get there, I'll be like, can I please borrow the wheelchair? And yes. Yeah, because I, there's a whole lot of working around there and buying. So most of the time I'll buy things and yes. I'll like, put it on top of my laps. At least I can move easily in that way. So what was it actually that made you fall in love with them? Because it's one thing to like each other and see each other's pictures and then go on a first date and realize you vibe, but you've already said that you love this man. So what is it about him that made you fall in love with him? So with him, he was genuine with every every question that I asked him, he answered. And um, I remember there was this other time where I was like, okay, he's... Uh, He's too nice. So, like, I'm going to push, you know, with asking very awkward questions. <laughs> like what? What did you ask that was awkward? I, I actually didn't ask him. He asked me. I remember there was this other time he was asking me, what are you doing? So, like, I'm taking a bath. I'm like, um, he should probably ask me for, you know, a picture of me. In the yes. bath. So, I was like, let's see what, you know, what he's going to say. And he asked another question instead of asking what I was, I was like, who's this guy? You know, mm. that's when I wanted to get to know him more. Yeah. And as well, I found out that we have more similar things. I mean, he loves music. I love music yeah. as well. And he also sent me some of his stuff, um, his music that he recorded, one mm. of his songs and the video as well. So I was like, hmm, okay, we gel because we have similarities. Not only that as well, yeah. we found out that our birthdays are like, mine is on the 6th of January and his is on the 8th of January. Yes. <laughs> so I said to him recently, I was like, what is this seven in the middle of our birthday? Yes. And I found out actually the seven, this um, uh, seven day, remember in the Bible in Genesis mm. is saying that that's when God actually relaxed because he's done creating mm. Mm. everything in this. So it's, it's completion, that's what it means. Yes. So I was like... I'm definitely, I feel complete with him in oh, my life. look at that. <laughs> look at that. For you, what, what made you fall in love with her? Well, I think, you know, to, to start with, um, she's just beautiful. Like, yeah, she's just a, one of a kind, you know, unique soul. And, you know, she just, she touched my heart. Uh, she's full of kindness, compassion, you know, uh, caring. Yeah, and she's um, one, of a kind. <laughs> one of a kind. Now, something happened when you guys initially were talking on t Tinder, right? Because we all know on the dating apps, you either swipe left or right, just based on one picture or a few pictures. What, what picture was it of him that you saw? <laughs> mm. He actually didn't have a top one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the reason why I asked him more questions because I was like, I like his bio. But this picture was a bit, it was questionable. I'm like, okay. <laughs> were, were the bio and the photograph not matching? It is. <laughs> mm -hmm. Bit of a contrast. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I actually, when we started chatting as well, I was like, I only see one picture on yes. your bio. Is it possible that you can send? I think you were just you? wondering if he owned any tops. <laughs> <laughs> like, do you actually have tops? <laughs> so, he looked good, though. I'm not complaining. Mm, did, did you at some point, though, suspect that he might be catfishing you? Yes. When I saw that picture, I was like, 
Um, okay, I need more. Maybe send me more pictures yes. and ask more questions. Hence, that's the reason why I was saying, when he asked me what I was doing and I said, I'm in a bath, I was like, okay, I know what next he's going to ask yes. me. But then he asked something totally different from what I thought he was going to ask me. So I was like, okay, maybe that picture is just the picture that he wanted to put yes. on his uh, bio. I think that makes total sense, but... We, you know, it's not a secret that many people go to Tinder for just hookups. Mm. Was it a hookup situation for you that you were looking for, but you were surprised and fell in love? Well, I wasn't actually looking for any, like, hookups, you know. I know there's always someone out there for someone, you know, uh, like sharing in a relationship, building, like, contrast and companionship. But, you know, I wasn't there just looking like, okay, finding yeah. some hookups and meeting with strangers. Well, I can't, can't call them strangers, but, yes. you know, just doing uh, things that your parents would frown on. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what do you hope uh, for the future of your relationship? Maybe we can have um, 50 kids. Woo! <laughs> So I'm looking for. <laughs> Listen, girl, I'm struggling with one. I don't know how. Yeah. He... I know. But go for, go for it. Go for it. 50 kids, what else do you hope for? <laughs> <laughs> okay. So I'm kidding about that first time. So for us to grow all together, yes. get to know him more where we where we already know each other more because we spend most of the time together yes. the weekends but um yeah to lot to grow all together basically do you believe in marriage i do and i'm assuming that's part of the grow all together yes yes okay. definitely <laughs> what do you hope for for the future of your relationship yeah i do believe that one day soon we yeah i'm gonna tie the knot and walk that same road together. Can I get an invite? I mean, you know, um, we spoke about it. Yeah, I want an invite. I think what I love about you guys' love stories, it just goes to show people might have whatever perceptions they have about the fact that, you know, you are living with a disability and you have certain physical restrictions. You are not living with a disability. And people might already have preconceived ideas about, oh, why are these two together or what the relationship is like. But it's just a beautiful love story. And that's that's the most important thing. I mean, my team earlier was speaking about those two are so in love. Like, that's all that there was. Like, those two are so in love. And I think that's absolutely beautiful. Thank you so much to the both of you for coming through to share. Are there any final words that you want, you know, the viewers to know about you or your relationship? Um, final would be that um, if you are looking for, you know, a, a, a relationship that is genuine, uh, no, nowadays it's difficult to even find that uh, true love, but mm. it, it still exists. So they must um, have hope and continue searching for that special someone. And they will definitely find that special someone eventually. And on your side? There's a time and place for everything. So don't rush. Just, um, yeah, hope, hope, for, hope for a better tomorrow because, you know, one of these days that that will find you or you will find it. Mm. Mm. Exactly as he has said it, love will find you or you will find it. And what I'd like to reiterate is that there is a time and a place for everything. For those of you that are watching that feel like, hey, I'm a bit different from your average person. There is hope out there and there is love out there, exactly as this couple is an example of genuine, true, authentic people with authentic love to give are out there. So stay true to yourself and hopefully that love will be coming around and knocking on your door. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night. Next time on Unpacked. Like, oh my gosh, I have to work now. Yes. You know, I gotta do, I gotta be a parent. We were very close. You know, we had supper, we slept early. And he was 11 at the time. I was woken up by screams. Opened the door, flames hit me, both my hands. You know, immediately my hands started peeling. I told him the house was burned down and, and Nadif was inside. Thank you 
so much for watching Unpacked with Rilip Khile Mamoja. Make sure you subscribe to my channel where you can get to watch more episodes. But more importantly, you can be part of our online community. Comment down below, share with us who you'd like to see on the show, what story you'd like us to discuss. We love engaging with you. Keep it coming and don't forget to subscribe.